Hey YouTube, Bill here. We're at the beach today. I'm looking for some quahog shells. My plan today is to try and make some wampum. It's the Native American uh, shells, purple and white shells they use to make beads. It's the quahog shell and the whelk shell. I'm going to try and demonstrate the traditional way of making it. And then, you know, move on to the modern technology see how this works out. Here the next day I'm set up to start trying to do this the traditional way. What I need to do is actually break off the purple part and then try and smooth it out. I'm gonna show how tedious this would have been as a process. So let's see what happens. The first step is the fun part, we've got to break it. So we want the, mostly the purple and mostly the flat-ish part. What I'm using is just, this is a piece of granite I got at the beach, and this is a piece of milky quartz I got at the beach. You can see, I don't know if, maybe you can't see, uh, you can see the purple. I said the purple doesn't go all the way through the shell. Over in here where the, there's more purple, it'll go uh, further through, but you can see the outside of the shell is a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know what to call it, call it rind, I guess. It's the actual growth part of the shell. So I'm going to try and get this a little bit smaller and a little more purple. So, that's a decent piece. I need a better monitor here so I can see what I'm actually looking at. So now the next step would actually be the tedious part. You need to smooth it. And it's just like sanding with sandpaper, except we're using a rock. The more coarse the stone you have, the better it would be. And I'm going to actually try and smooth this out a little bit more. Just because it's fairly rough. So, what I would do is just keep sitting here. You gradually smooth out the backside and take off all that rind. You can see how long this kind of thing was going to take. And I can keep going at this. It'll probably take me a couple hours to make one bead. And I'd have to actually switch to uh, more and more successively fine stones. 
And at some point I'd have to do this side, try and smooth it down, get it more flat. And it would get there eventually. But because this is 2023, I have modern technology I can use. What I've got here is commonly referred to as a flat lap. It's a spinning disc that's impregnated with tiny chips of diamonds. They have grits just like sandpaper. There's a water dripper to take away the slurry from the dust and also to keep the item cool and the disc cool. And this process is infinitely faster than a rock. You can see here that even though it's at fast speed, there hasn't been much time and I've already gotten it smoothed off and flattened out as I slowly work it, work it down. You can see the progress being made as we go. And the objective is to get it shaped originally. And then once we've got it to the shape we want, all the edges smoothed, everything flattened out, then we will move on to finer and finer and finer grits as we get through the process. All right, so as I go, you can see with it wet right now, it's very shiny. But if I dry it off, it's a lot more dull and it's still even a little wet. If you can see how, how not shiny that is. So now we're going to move on to the next step. This one because it's got a little bit of surface rust on it. It didn't necessarily take the rust off of it, but it smooths out the rust, so if there's any chips or whatnot, there won't be a problem. that we can clean it off and you can see just that one grit finer dry it off here well it's not shiny it's certainly more vivid in color and you can see there's still I don't know maybe you can't see the camera probably won't pick it up but you can see the the scratches that are in there from the previous step so now I'm gonna switch to the next step which is something I got. They're, uh, they're designed for polishing uh, stone and marble, tile, whatever, floors. You wouldn't think something like this would actually do a very good job, but it does a really nice job. And I have these in grits from 50 to 3,000. And the grits are just like sandpaper. I'm going to start here on 500. So I think that's about all I need. The only thing with this is because of how short this threaded shaft is, can't use the washer with it. That doesn't seem to be a problem. This is meant to be hook and loop that sticks onto a, like a polisher. 
I don't use it that way. I have some some other things here that I just just purchased. But I'm gonna have to get an extension to the shaft. These are they're a foam impregnated with diamond. I'm looking forward to trying out those, but I can't try that out here. I'm gonna see what happens here. This is very thin, so it's gonna be tough to hold. Hope, hopefully I'll be able to do it. Turn on my water. Almost lost it there. And the trick with these is you can only get the edges right on one of these little, uh, if you go between the ridges, it'll very often chip it. I don't want that to happen here. Sorry about the noise if that bothers you. It's about the only way I know to get it to work. So this is on 300 grit, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's almost all those scratches from the previous step are gone. I'm gonna give it a little bit more touch. grits. That was, I think I said 500. Yep, that's 500. We can move to 800. These, unlike the others, have the grit embossed into the, the hook and loop backing. So you never have to wonder which grit these are. Let's smooth out those scratches. I lost it. Hopefully I didn't break it. I try and find it here. This is where that's much more likely to happen and also much more dangerous because as it gets thinner and closer to finished, if it whips it out of your hand and smacks it into the side, all your work is all gone. Let's see if we can turn this speed down a little. Try and be able to keep hold of it a little better. I have to use my, my right hand will kind of hide what, what I'm doing here. You know what I'm doing. You've seen it. All right, I'll try and get the other side. Now we're actually starting to get somewhere. See, maybe you can see right in this corner. It's no long. It's not quite flat. I don't know how that happened, but I'll go clean that up a bit. 
but you can see it's starting to you can't see there you go you can start to see that it's getting shiny it's not super glossy yet the back's pretty shiny except over here where it's the still the got the rind on it but that's okay I like to see some of that nature that nature created try and smooth out this edge here Now I'm going to switch to the next grit. Now that was 800. I'm going to jump right to 1500. This shell is fairly soft, so there's my water there. The harder the stone, the more likely you have to step through grits. See what happens here. All right, you can see I need to do a little bit more on the on this uh, grit here. It's getting really shiny. This whole edge over here is not quite smooth and flat, and there's some kind of haze over there, so I'm going to give it a little more time on there. I'm less concerned with the back, but the back actually looks super smooth. But I'm going to give it a little more time on the front. All right, and now probably going to need some more water, but I'm going to go on to the final grit, which is 3,000. I'm skipping over 2,000. I skipped over 1,000. So it's not all that necessary to go straight through every single sequential grit that you have. I'm going to uh, go get some more water real quick. All right, back full of water. We got 3,000 grit on the the machine. I like to use a lot more water. I think the instructions actually tell you to use less water, but I find that this step is critical to get the slurry out of there. Maybe it's just these specific devices for the, the pads, or maybe it's my technique, or I don't know, but whatever it is, I use a lot of water on this. I think I'm adding facets to it. That's what happens when you when you freehand it. That's where these are supposed to come in. 
That's why I wanted to try these because I can. It's a more contiguous surface and it's got some give to it. But I think that might actually be about as good as I'm going to get here. I could try and get a little bit better, but it's pretty shiny. If you can see, it's like buffing a car. The shine doesn't go perfectly smooth and flat, it tells you there's something wrong. I'm going to try and get it a little bit better. Hopefully I don't lose it. Didn't, I think I might just call this good enough. Yeah, I'm gonna call that good enough. That got it a lot smoother. Not quite there. Hopefully when I switch over to the, uh, the foam pad ones, I'll be able to get much better. If I was really so inclined, I could actually some cerium oxide. I can throw that on a, a buffing wheel and buff the heck out of this and make this shine like a mirror. But I don't know if anybody likes this, but I hope you enjoyed it. I know I had fun making it. At one point I'm going to try and make a whole lot of these. Maybe make something useful with them or maybe just have them on a shelf. I hope you enjoy.